after all those years for what I had been through. Did you ever thought of me even better than ever? Well, now I am. There's no telling what I have been up to. No, there is no telling what. But you will see. Scarloe had been to the works to be mended. He felt much better. Rusty the Diesel was helping him off his rail car. Scarloe hadn't met the little diesel before. Rusty seems a kindly sort of engine, he thought to himself. I help to mend the line and do odd jobs, explained Rusty. I hear everyone is looking forward to seeing you again. Come on. Peter Sam was feeling depressed. He was still getting over his accident, but he wanted to start work again. Sir Topham Hatt wouldn't let him. Another day's rest will do you good, he said. Besides, I've got a surprise for you. For me, sir? How nice, sir. What is it, sir? Wait and see. The surprise was Scarloe. Oh, said Peter Sam, I'm glad you've come home. They lit Scarloe's fire and he sizzled happily. I feel all excited, he said, just like a young engine. Now tell me all the news. I see you've met Rusty, said Peter Sam. Yes, I like that diesel. So do I, replied Peter Sam. It's a pity Duncan doesn't. Who is Duncan? He came as a spare engine after my accident, replied Peter Sam. Is he useful? He keeps busy, and I'm sure he means well, but he's bouncy and rude. He sings and sways and swivels around. His drivers call it rock and roll. I understand, said Scarloe gravely. His driver interrupted. Duncan has done it again. He's stuck in a tunnel. Come on, old boy, we'll have to get him out. Scarloe was pleased. He wanted to run and looked forward to meeting Duncan. They found the caboose and some workmen and hurried up the line. How nice and smooth the rails are, thought Scarloe. They've mended all the old bumps. The little diesel has helped to do that. What a difference Rusty's made to the line. Quite soon, they found Duncan. He was stuck at the far end of the tunnel, and he was very cross. I'm a plain, blunt engine. I speak as I find. Tunnels should be tunnels and not rabbit holes. This railway is no good at all. Don't be silly, snapped his driver. This tunnel is quite big enough for engines who don't rock and roll. It took a long time to clear away the rocks and set Duncan free again. At last, Scarloe was able to push Duncan and his coaches safely through. Caboose was left on the siding, and the workmen stayed to make sure everything was safe. Duncan grumbled all the way home, but Scarloe paid no attention. Later, Sir Topham Hatt spoke severely to Duncan. 
Listen to me. There is nothing wrong with that tunnel. You stuck in it because you tried to do rock and roll. Tunnels are not dance floors, and you are not a pop star. Then Sir Topham Hatt gave his full attention to Duncan's funnel. If it happens again, he ended ominously, I shall find ways to cut you down to size. In other words, your career is <clears throat> on the line. Need I say more? Duncan thought Sir Topham Hatt had said quite enough, and he remained completely silent and still for at least a whole evening. Scarloe, the little engine, loves all the sights and sounds along his line and knows them very well. One morning, soon after he returned from being mended, he was enjoying his journey more than ever before. Along the way, he met Rusty. You know, he said, if I couldn't see these familiar faces and places, I'd think I was on a different railway. You've done wonders with these rails. Rusty laughed. I'm glad you're pleased. Manager said, let's mend the track so well that he won't know where he is. And we did. And you didn't, if you take my meaning. Scarloe liked this hard-working diesel. There's still one bad bit, warned Rusty, just before the first station. An engine might come off there, particularly Duncan. He will rock and roll along the line. Look at him right now. I hope he doesn't hurt his passengers. What's that about me? I'm a plane engine, and I believe in plane speaking. Speak up! Rusty warned Duncan about the bad bit of rail. Huh! I know my way about. I don't need smelly diesels to tell me what to do. Rusty felt hurt. Duncan banged about the yard. Then he clattered crossly to the station. James was already there, waiting for him. You're late, he snapped. I know, said Duncan. It's that smelly diesel's fault. Rusty tries to teach me how to stay on the rails, and then goes off leaving me to find my own coaches. You poor engine, sympathized James. I know all about diesels. One crept into our yard and ordered us about. I soon sent him packing. Duncan was filled with admiration. He didn't know that James was boastful, and sometimes didn't tell the truth. Send Rusty packing! Send Rusty packing! snorted Duncan. He climbed the hill furiously. Well done, boy, encouraged his driver. Keep it up. Soon they were near the first station. Duncan was pleased. Nothing's happened. Nothing's happened, silly old diesel. Clever me. And he rocked and rolled along the line. Steady, boy, checked his driver. But it was too late. Sleepers and ballast, I'm off. And he was. I warned him, said Rusty. But all he did was call me names. The little diesel refused to move. I'm ashamed of you, Rusty, said Scarloe. Think of the passengers. What are they going to do? Oh, I'd forgotten them. Yes, of course. We must help the passengers. And Rusty roared into life. Duncan stood sad and solitary. He couldn't rock and roll now. Oh dear, he thought. Everyone will know how silly I am. The passengers had to get out and help too. 
They weren't very pleased about that, but worked as hard as they could. They carefully levered Duncan back onto the line. After that, Duncan was extra careful all day. At last, evening came. Rusty, he whispered. Thank you for helping. I'm sorry I was rude to you. That's all right, Duncan. I wish all diesels were like you. Let's be friends. Suits me, replied Rusty. We'll mend that bad bit of rail first thing tomorrow. Thank <laughs> you.